Hello everyone, welcome to Indicative class. So in today's lecture of data science, we are going to discuss about the R loops. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the decision making statements that is a if statement, if statement and switch statement. But uh, we have seen that uh, in that decision making statements, when we are executing some instructions on the basis of the condition, then we can execute that condition code only once. But in the loops, we can execute the condition codes on the basis of a condition in that decision making statements when we are executing some instructions on the basis of the condition then we can execute that condition code only once. But in the loops we can execute the condition codes on the basis of a condition multiple times or you can say several times you can execute the same lines of code until the condition remains false. Okay. So, let us start here may be a situation where you need to execute a block of code several number of times that means we have written uh, we have written only the code once but we can execute that for several period of times and in general statements are executed sequentially so the first statement in a function is executed first and followed by the second and so on so that is a sequential execution and programming languages provide various control structures that allow for more complicated execution paths that means the uh, programming language structure we have which we have followed that allows different types of execution path that means uh, we can also display it in the flow chart. So, for every decision making statements or you can say every control structures there is uh, there must be a flow chart which displays the path of the execution and a loop statement allows us to execute a statement or group of statements multiple times and also in the general form of loop statement is most of the programming language where which I will show you in the flow chart. So, this is the flow chart of uh, R loops. So, this is the condition code and uh, on the basis of the condition if the condition is true then the condition code will execute and again after executing the condition code it will again check the condition and if, if it is true then it will again execute that condition code and until the condition is false it will execute that same conditional codes and it checks the condition again and again and if the condition code is false then it will come out of the loop body and it will execute the condition codes which is which are written outside of the loop body. R programming language which provides the following kinds of loops to handle looping requirements. So, there are different types of loops like repeat loop, while loop and for loop. So, in the repeat loop it executes a sequence of statements multiple times and also it abbreviates the code that manages the loop variable and uh, next, uh, next type of loop is a while loop. So, when while loop it repeats the statement or a group of statements you can say while a given condition is true and it tests the condition before executing the loop body that means first it checks the condition and so while the condition is true then the condition code will execute and then for loop like a while statement except that it tests the condition at the end of the loop body. So, we will discuss one after another about this R loops. So, R repeat loop the R, R repeat loop executes the same code again and again until a stop condition is met that means we have to give a condition which will stop that loop like some break statements or some exit function anything you can put there. So, there is a syntax of creating a repeat loop in R that means repeat here is our loop body starts and then commands whatever commands you want to write and then if condition then break and uh, in, inside the if, if that condition will uh, stays true then it will go for the uh, condition which will stop that loop and before the condition we have to write our condition codes that means you can say any type of operation which you want to perform by using that loop we have to write down that inside the comment section. So, let us see this is the flow diagram and uh, first we have to check the condition codes and then the condition codes uh, it will execute on the basis of the loop that means it is written inside the loop body. 
So, condition code execute and then it will check for the condition. If that condition is true, then it will go for condition code and if that is uh, false, then it will go for end. Otherwise, in this repeat loop, there is a break statement or you can say there is a condition which will stop the loop. So, by also we can uh, go for the stop of the loop or you can say the end of the loop. This is an example of repeat loop. So, v and then uh, v is uh, one vector and inside that we have put two elements that is hello and loop. And there is another vector we can say variable also which is assigned with the value 2 and uh, that c and t stands for count that means we have to uh, increment the value of the count and we have to check that in the condition. So, here we will start our loop then repeat uh, loop, loop we have to execute or you can say by providing the repeat loop or by using the repeat loop we have to execute the condition codes ok. So, condition codes are only two lines print the value of v and we have to increment the count value by 1 for every iteration of the loop. Then we have to check the condition if count is greater than 5 or not. When it will uh, stands true that means when the count value is greater than 5 then it will execute or it will coming comes under the if statements block and then it will execute the break statement which will end the repeat loop. So, first let uh, say in the first iteration when we are executing the loop so repeat print v. So, inside the v we have uh, two elements hello and loop. So, it will uh, execute hello and loop then uh, count count plus count count plus 1 that means now count value first count value is initialized with 2. So, now count value is 2 plus 1 that is 3. So, now if count value is greater than 5 that means 3 is greater than 5 count value now it is 3. So, 3 is greater than 5 true or false it is false that means 3 is not greater than 5 it is less than 5. So, it will not execute the condition code or the instructions which are written inside the if block that is your break statement or you can say the stop condition. So, now it will again check or it will again repeats the loop. So, print b it will again print. So, this is our second iteration like let. So, for the second time it will print hello and loop then count. So, count value is now 3. So, it will again incremented by 1 that is our 4. Now, 4 is greater than 5? No, it is false. 4 is less than 5. So, it will again uh, executes the loop. So, now it will again print the value v and that, that is hello and loop. So, it will third time it will print hello and loop. Then count count plus 1. So, now count value is 4. So, it will incremented by 5 that is our 5 4 plus 1 equals to 5. So, now 5 is greater than 5? No, 5 is equals to 5. Here we have written only greater than not greater than equals to. So, 5 is not greater than 5. So, it will not execute the break statement. So, now again it will go for the repeat. So, it will fourth time we are uh, executing the condition code or you can say this is the fourth iteration. It will again print the value which have stored inside the v vector so, that is our hello and loop. So, the fourth time it will print the hello and loop. Now, count value is incremented by 1. So, count value is 5. So, 5 plus 1 equals to 6. So, 6 is greater than 5. Yes, it is true. So, it will execute the break statement and then the loop will end. So, now the output will be uh, it will print um, only 4 times the whatever the values we have assigned into the vector that is hello and loop. So, let us see this is output or not yes this is the output that means we have uh, incremented the count value in the 4 times first is 2, 3, 4 and 5 when it is 6 the condition is stays true. So, it will go for the break statement that is our condition to stop our loop ok. So, this is one example or you can say this is another example of repeat loop. So, let us say we have to print the results and uh, now here you can see uh, the result value is our let 1 and uh, this is the test expression and then repeat this is the test expression that means it will start of the loop. So, repeat 
the loop body started that means opening curly braces then the condition codes here we have written three lines that means print result i will be assigned with or you can say by incrementing i plus 1 it will be assigned into again i for every iteration of the loop and uh, next result equals to result plus 1. So, whatever the value it is uh, given it is stored in the result that will be incremented by 1 recently. So, then break condition if i greater than 5 then the loop will be end. So, the condition is if the i value will be greater than 5 that means when it, it uh, comes into 6 then the loop will end. So, let us see what will be the re output of this. So, first the result vector is assigned with the value 1 and the vector i or you can say the variable i is uh, assigned or initialized with the value 1. So, now the expression will start. So, it is the update expression you can see that uh, the i value and the result value will be updated by using this line of course. So, only we have to print the value of the result here we have not written the print statements for the i value. So, we have to only print the result. So, let us see first the result value is 1. So, repeat loop is started the next line is because we know that is it is sequential execution. So, line by line it will execute. So, first it will go for the print line. So, print result. So, what is the result value? Initially it is 1. So, it will print 1. Then it will increment the i value that is which is initially 1 that will be incremented by 1 again. So, it will now i stores the value 2 then result equals to result plus 1. So, now result value is recent value is 1. So, 1 plus 1 equals to 2. So, now result value is also 2. So, break condition will it will check. So, if i greater than 5 no i value is 2 which is less than 5. So, it will not go for the stop condition. It will not execute the statements which are written inside the e block. Then again it will go for the loop. So, then print result. So, now the result value is our 2 because 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Now, it will again update the value of the i and result. Okay. So, the value of the i now equals to 2. So, 2 plus 1 equals to 3. Then result value is our 2. So, 2 plus 1 equals to 3 also. So, now it will again go for the break condition check. So, it will check. So, if i greater than uh, 5 that means 3 is greater than 5 no it is false. So, it will not execute the break condition or it, it will not execute the statements which are written inside this break condition. So, it will again go for the rule loop. So, it will print the result value. So, result is 3. So, ne next it will update expression. So, i value is now 3 plus 1 equals to 4. So, like this it will go again and again until the i value is 6. So, when i value is 6 then it will uh, execute the break statements which is written inside the if block then the loop will be ended. So, here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that means we are only printing the result value. So, up to 5 value it will print because when the result value is become 6 that times the i value is also become 6 which will uh, satisfies the condition you can say or you can say the stop condition will be executed. So, that is why it will ends the repeat loop. So, this is all about our repeat loop. Next one is our, our while loop. So, the while loop executes the same code again and again until a stop condition is made. That means, the while loop executes the uh, codes as similar with the repeat, but here we have to gives the condition in the while statements. There we, we have to gives the condition in the if statement, but here in the while statement in the same statements we can provide our conditions and inside the while, while block we have to write down our condition codes. So, basic syntax for creating a while loop R is like this. So, inside the while we have to write down the text expression and then inside that we have to write down the condition code. This is a flow diagram while condition conditional quotes then if condition is true then code block will execute it and if the condition is false then it will go for the end of the loop. So, here the key point of the while loop is that the loop might not ever run 
when the condition is tested and the result is false so the loop body will be skipped and the first statement after the while loop will be executed only that means when the condition is tested and uh, you can say the condition is tested as false also because when it is true then the statements will be executed but when it is false in the first iteration then what we will do in the first all the loop body will be skipped and the first statement after the while loop will be executed that means whatever the first statements which are written outside of the just outside of the while, while block that will be executed so this is the example small example of while loop that means here is one vector b inside that we are having two elements hello and while loop and there is another count value which is assigned with two that means while count is less than seven then what will be the uh, condition codes which are going to be executed so here is our condition that means count value has to be less than seven if it is greater than seven or equals to seven then it will come outside of the loop body so now while count less than seven yes it is true because now uh, or you can say initially the count value is true and we are not incrementing the count value till so it will print the elements inside the v so elements are hello and while loop so it is the first then count value is incremented to three then again count value is less than seven yes it is true then it will again print the value v then again it will increment the count value now in count value is four so now four is less than seven yes it is true so it will again print the elements inside the vector b so it is hello and while loop so you can see the same syntax in which we have written the elements in the same format it is displayed in the output window because you have to remember these things also so then next again count value is incremented to 5 5 is less than 7 yes it is true so now it is again print the vector v's elements then again count value is incremented to 6 so it is again so it is fifth sign it is printing the value and again count value is incremented to 7 now 7 is less than 7 no 7 is equals to 7 here only we are providing the condition of less than not less than equals to here also you have to uh, remember these things so the operator is our less than so it is only check whether the value is less than the result or not so the value is 7 so it is not less than 7 it is equals to 7 so the condition is false so it is it will come outside of the loop and whatever the result it will display so it will display the elements of v five times because in the six times the count value will be incremented to seven and the condition will false okay. so this is another example of while that means print i as long as i is less than seven so there, there are some examples which will, which are coming in the in the exam like this that write a program uh, to print the i value or anything any value or sum of the values for six times or seven times or up to a range so in that we can uh, we can uh, use the concept of loops okay so i i is one that means i less than i is assigned with the value one so it is initialized with one now uh, while i less than six that means i value will be incremented and tested again and again until i value is less than 6 so print i so the i value will be printed and uh, it will again go for checking the conditions and it is again incrementing the i value and when the i value is incremented to 6 then the condition will false okay so the loop will be in and the program execution will completed so the output will be displayed as 1 2 3 4 and Five. So, you can also uh, run some other programs in the R compiler uh, and also you can uh, test all these loops. Okay. So, this is all about our today class. In the next class, we are going to we will discuss about uh, another loop that is our for loop. Okay. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.